every facet of life and work in this great institution. At the same time, Baraton has grown to become a modern, forward-looking institution which consistently sets out and meets very high standards. In so doing, the university has demonstrated the power of faith in organizing, developing, and actualizing important national institutions and the essential roles that faith-based organizations continue to perform and their undeniable contribution to our nation's development. This university, in particular, has not hesitated in asserting moral values and ethical principles as essential components of all meaningful work. Consequently, its work and the people associated with it have impressed with their unique impact in our communities, organizations, and enterprises. Ladies and gentlemen, this graduation ceremony is therefore a worthy celebration of 42 years of ambition, consistency, and impact. It is a confirmation that the decision of the church to establish an institution of higher learning and of the government of Kenya to charter it were inspired decisions. Not only was this, as I said earlier, not only was this the first faith-based university to receive a charter, but it was also the first institution to offer nursing at the degree level in our region. And also the first to offer medical laboratory science as a degree course. And that is why I am very proud to be associated with Baraton University. The reason why our un universal health care agenda has taken off is that the legacy of this university enabled Kenya to establish a robust pool of human capital in our healthcare ecosystem. This university was also among the foremost in promoting ICT as a fundamental infrastructure for competitiveness and efficiency. Not only has it led to the way, not only has it led the way in training innovative and enterprising ICT professionals, but learning in this institution was also not disrupted by COVID-19 pandemic because it had the capacity to transition seamlessly online, even holding a virtual graduation ceremony. <laughs> Similarly, this university reaffirmed its commitment to generate research and impact knowledge and skills that are in great demand in the local community. In 1978, it set out on land where the U Ministry of Agriculture had been running the Animal Husbandry Institute. It, is, it not only took over the property, but has also been operating an exemplary dairy farm which continues to provide the local community with knowledge and skills in animal husbandry and dairy management. After 46 years of ambition, consistency, and commitment to impact service, it is now evident that the University of Eastern African Bar uh, Baraton is a formidable institution which delivers without fail. It is time to translate nearly half a century of excellent achievement into a radical vision for the future based on intentional endeavor to contribute to Kenya's national transformation and to change the world positively through faith-based education and leadership. I dare say it is time to align firmly with a collective desire of Kenyans for rapid positive change develop and deliver innovative solutions, and provide leadership for the future grounded on excellence, efficiency, integrity, and compassion. The world today is confronted with 
multiple complex and dynamic threats and challenges, a number of which pose existential implications for humanity and all life on Earth. Climate change and the threat of pandemics are the foremost of these risks. On another level, food and nutrition security, threats ranging from biotechnology to cybersecurity, will continue to loom large over us. The world today has vast opportunity and unprecedented potential for success, not only for individuals, but also for communities, organizations, and nations. Globalization has escalated the scale of transformative possibilities to levels that were not imaginable only two decades ago. I want to ask Baraton University to take its place, seize the opportunity, and provide leadership in this complex and changing world, because you can do it. <laughs> to successfully confront the threats, navigate the complexity, and exploit the opportunities before us, we shall have to develop the capacity to engage with technology and practice innovative innovation boldly and ambitiously. This university has grown and shown that it is capable of doing precisely that, and young citizens, like the graduating class of 2024, are exactly whom we need to make it happen. I hope the graduating class of 2024 will not let us down. <laughs> I encourage you, all of you, to face the future with both confidence and ambition, with courage and integrity, and with boldness as well as imagination. Teach in this university future graduates, science, technology, economics, arts and humanities, management, leadership, the power of the almighty God of all creation, and about the role of values in elevating societal institutions to achieve transformation. Never forget God of all creation. And as I said earlier in my acceptance speech, I am very proud that today I join a convocation of wonderful men and women who have graduated from this great institution. I am told there are 15,000 of them. I am very happy. Um, I'm saying those who have graduated so far, not the, not the ones who are here. <laughs> and I am very happy that um, in the citation, a few things have been mentioned about my contribution. Let me mention two of them. One of them is the decision to deal with a challenge that existed for between 15, 10 and 15 years. We had students waiting for almost two years before they could join university. When I became Minister for Higher Education, I decided that it was time to eliminate this challenge that had been with us for a long time and nobody wanted to make the decision because it was difficult. When I made that decision and provided the leadership for us to get out of that conundrum, I received a lot of flag. I received a lot of flag. But because it was the right decision, we implemented it. Today, many of our students are beneficiaries that they can complete their higher education this year and join university next year. And we stopped the hemorrhage in our education system of many students who, staying at home for two years, ended up getting married 
and ended up not pursuing higher education. The other decision that I was confronted with is the format of our education. For years, Kenya concentrated on formal education and very little of technical education. When I became Minister for Higher Education, and having assessed our skills audit and realized that we were way behind many countries in matters technical education, I began the journey to reposition technical education in our education system. I remember the Vice Chancellor of Moore University then writing an opinion in the newspaper and saying how wrong I was. But today, we have grown students in our technical education ecosystem from about 20,000 then, in 2000, I think, and nine. Now, we have close to 700,000 students in our technical education. And we are making tremendous progress. It was a difficult decision then. Today, we all share in the, its outcome. I know many people contributed, many people worked with us to make that a reality. I am also persuaded now as I was then that we need a funding model that is not focused on the university but focused on the student. Yes. A funding model that will not leave any child in Kenya behind. A funding model that recognizes that there are children from vulnerable families. I don't think it is correct for all of us to assume that we are all the same and that students from vulnerable families don't need affirmative action. They do. And that is why, in this new model, we are increasing scholarship and loan for students from vulnerable families from 80% to 95%. <laughs> I am persuaded that it is the right thing to do. And so, as it was difficult before, so it is now, but the right decisions need to be made anyway. We will celebrate them further down the road. To the class of 2024, I congratulate you on your hard work and achievement. I wish you success as you go forth into the world. Practice your professions and actualize your great potential for the benefit of your families and your nation. I pray fervently that your wisdom, integrity, and strength increase as you put your knowledge and skills to the service of God, our Creator, our nation, and to our fellow citizens. Thank you very much. My very best wishes. Well done. God bless you. Thank you very much. Asante sana mheshimiwa rais kwa hotuba hiyo na maamuzi yako ya busara kuna vipengee muhimu ambao umegusia pale karibuni mnaweza keti tafadhali e, tunashukuru sana kwa sasa mheshimiwa rais kwa hisani yako naomba kwamba utukubalie tuweze kuwakaribisha wana University of Eastern African Coral Eastern African Baraton Coral waweze kutupa wimbo mmoja